Hello. Did you all eat breakfast? Yes. Was it good? Yes. Not just coffee and something sweet. That's what I do. Ooh, the bacon was perfect. The environment was wonderful. My friends were, they all showed up. And we had, everybody slept last night. No, no. The bed was comfortable. The stink bugs are plentiful. Does anybody have stink bugs in your room? Yes, yes. All of you have stink bugs, you get your money back. I mean, no, not really. Not really. Not really. Woo! I've killed two. But one lady's, and she had more than two. Where's she at? Virginia. Where was she? She's from Virginia. But anyway. So. But it is a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. A new day. A brand new day. And what we get out of this day will be up to you. We have wonderful speakers. And as Sister Gail's going to come and we're going to sing a song, that's what you're supposed to do. So I said we're going to do it different than the men. We're going to have a song. We're going to have a speaker. We're going to go be done. Go to another class so we can eat again. Sister Gail comes, we've got some announcements. Uh, after this service, we're going to have some classes, what do you all call them, workshops. And one of them is chaos to cleanliness. Does anybody have chaos going on at your house? My husband's bathroom is terrible, terrible. And, and he'll say, leave my stuff alone. But I go in about once a week, and he uses hairspray <laughs> and body powder, and he does this, and it goes everywhere. <laughs> and uh, he does. I'm picking on Dallas, but he's online, and I love him. <laughs> but his bathroom's kind of chaos, so I'm going to make sure Sister Gail gets, that gets to that. But a minute, But... Uh, Chaos to Cleanliness is the, from 11 to 1145, and it will be down in the little building when you're coming up the hill, that pretty little blue-gray building that's down here in the corner. And you all can go down there and learn how to unchaos your house. And then there is Training the Church for Tomorrow. Hannah Lloyd. Stand up, Sister Hannah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There she is. And she will be doing Training the Church for Tomorrow. How old are you? No. So uh, that will be over. Where is it? It's in the dorm meeting room over here. And then um, fundamentals of quilting. And that is uh, going to be under the lodge. And there can only be 40 people. So there'll be bouncers at the door. <laughs> if you can get in the door quickly, 39, 40, close, that's it. That's all she can take is 40 people. So that's where you think you're heading. You can't roll a gag in here and, and stay and talk. Now, if you're praying, you just have to go to another class. So what you have to do is you have to make your way. And these are wonderful, wonderful speakers, wonderful workshops. Wonderful, wonderful, everything that we that we can come together, enjoy, and learn. Isn't that awesome? And so, uh, and the quilting class will only be offered this morning. So, but, so but this afternoon, this afternoon, if you want to go to the quilting class, and your house is all clean, and you think you've got the church all figured out, the, uh, the shops will be open, okay? So let's all stand. Let's all stand. You know, I have been reading in Ephesians chapter 1. And it talks about our eyes of our knowledge being enlightened. 
which becomes the hope of the glory of God in us. There's a little boy called Christopher Duffley, and he's blind. He was born blind. And I listened to him the other day as he sang that song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. We read the Bible. Oh, yes, we do. Y'all brought your Bibles. And we hear the messages from the wonderful speakers like Sister Ruth. We hear it. We read it. And we do all knocking on the doors and we teach the Sunday school classes. But Ephesians is saying we need to open our hearts so we can see. You know, I open my ears. I look with my eyes. But let's go deeper while we're here. Let's take what Sister Ruthie said. Take what Sister Meadows is going to say. Let's take them and not just hear them. Put it deep inside of us. Let the light of Christ say, wow, I'm going to be 70 years old and I never felt that inside of me before. It's making a difference because I allowed him to shine his light on that that I needed and I didn't know I needed it. Let's pray first. Father, Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you that you know each one of us. And it's so wonderful that you made us so individual and yet your spirit ministers to us exactly all of our needs, so many different needs. We ask you, Lord, to give us this morning's service throughout the day. Shine your light. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And anoint Sister Meadows as she comes after this song in Jesus' name. Say, say thanks, thanks. I give you thanks. Even with everything we have going on in our life, we have a lot to thank the Lord for. Thanks, thanks.
did. And uh, Sister Carolyn Meta, she is from the West. And we've got quite a variety of Sister Snows from the North. And, and we have Sister Melody Dean from the South. Have a couple from the West. And all of us here in the middle of it. <laughs> the Midwest or wherever we're at, but we have got wonderful speakers. This lady is very special to me. What a lady. What a woman. What a pastor's wife. What a mom. She's, she's got it all. So if you listen to her, and if you'll open the eyes of your heart, open your heart, and I'm sure she's got something kind of wild looking for us. Well, it's my privilege to be here today, and all of you all, and we're going to try to get you out of here in time to do your workshops, and uh, I've noticed all of these years, I, I'm, I'm used to a clock somewhere, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think we'll try to use my phone, but uh, well, it's, you know, you are wonderful ladies. And uh, also, Sister Ruth, I've, I've carried these ladies in my heart ever since they called me to speak today. And I know the other speakers and the ones that are doing different things today, you, you've carried this, this meeting, you know. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. I want uh, Tasha to come. And, uh, okay, she's going to do some things for me. You don't have to come. You've you, you got all your stuff. But uh, I, I have got acquainted with Deborah this year. And I, you know, the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about Deborah. But uh, what it does say, it's, it's dynamite. And, uh, about 
dead business. And uh, I want to give you a little history. You know, as I was as I was studying, uh, like I said, there wasn't there was, there's not a lot said about Deborah, but it's powerful what is said because uh, in Israel they had again backslidden. Listen. The judges ruled for 450 years. There was 14 judges. Okay? According to my studies, 350 years, Israel done pretty good. But there was 100 years in there when they would get to doing good, then uh, they would fall again back into sin. And uh, so, Deborah, like I said, 14 judges. The fourth judge is God chose a woman. Now that's amazing. That's wonderful. That, but listen, that's not uncommon for what the Lord has done through the years. And you know, in the New Testament, God chose Mary, the mother of Jesus, a young woman, to carry the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and give birth to him. And God used a young woman. And then, so some of you are, are younger and some of you are older. Sometimes the older women are vice versa. I've had it both ways. Sometimes when you're young, you think, I'm too young. No, you're not. No, you're not. Now, I don't know how old Deborah was. The Bible doesn't say how old she was. But let me say this. Also, then God chose at the beginning of the New Testament to use Elizabeth. Elizabeth was an older woman. Listen, just because you've got a little white hair and, and they call you grandma or mama or something like that, you are a great influence and you are a Deborah. Listen, honestly, I, I don't care what you do. We, well, yeah, I see you guys putting that on, on you. My name is Deborah. You say, say to your neighbor, how are you, Deborah? Hi, Deborah. Something like that. You know, hi, Deborah. So we are Deborah today. We are Deborah today in this service. And whether we be young like Mary or whether we be older like Elizabeth that had already passed the years of childbearing, and God looked down and said, I need John the Baptist born, and I'm going to get Zach, uh, Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth, and I'm going to use them, and God used them in a mighty way. Listen, I've got to, I've got to tell you this. It really, really touched me. I heard uh, this said the other day about uh, Naomi and Ruth. And, uh, you know, when Naomi came back empty, she thought, was, she thought she was all washed up. It's all. I went out full and I come back empty. There's nothing else for me to do. And, and, and God's finished with me. But let me tell you something. God took Naomi. And because she went back and because of her daughter-in-law that said, I will uh, go where you go. You're going to be my God. God used them. And because of that, then the lineage of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, kept going forward. So I want you to realize this morning that you are a devil, whether you be young or whether you be older. Don't feel like you're washed up. I'm telling you, ladies, I've had, listen, let me tell you something. Woo! I just, I just kind of want to put on these heels. I'm telling you one thing. This is the thing that I want to tell you. You, it's not over, okay? And you put on your heels, my dear, and you put on your hat, my dear. And you grab your purse, my dear, and you say, I am a Deborah and I've got things to do. Claremore, now, Tasha, I don't know if you're doing a good job. No, I, I don't think I'll get that close. But 
but it's a big company that makes a lot of important stuff with the oil field, okay? Industry. There's this big sign on it with this young girl that's smiling. And you know what it says? Energize your career. And what that saying is, listen, now I got up, I got online as we were scribing yesterday, and I, I got online and uh, they had job opportunities, and they're saying we're not about to die. I got a purse, I got shoes. I had a, I had an aunt, a great aunt. It was the joke of the family. If you want to ask uh, Aunt Birdie to go anywhere, she's got her purse ready. All she, she's got to do is say, hey, I'll get my purse and let's go. I want to tell you, ladies, what I really want to do is I want to energize you Just 
this lady. And a lady of purpose. And a lady that was going somewhere. I do not believe that Brother Lapidot was a whippy. Stay holy. Uh, uh, sissy. Taka. I don't think that he was unmanly. I don't think that he was ungodly. I believe that he was dedicated. And uh, so, I think us women need to realize this. Listen, just because God chooses you, and this is what I want, I want to say to you today. God chose Deborah. Now I know there has probably been, and maybe so, and I may have read, where God couldn't use Lapidoth because he was blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you what, I believe with all my heart, just like God used Joseph and Mary, and God used Elizabeth and Zacharias, and God in the New Testament used uh, Pris Priscilla and Aquila, and God used other women in the Bible that God can and will use every one of us. Okay. Let me read this. But ye are a chosen generation. I want, I want you to take thought of that word chosen. Because I don't, I don't have all the answers of why God chose Deborah. But God did. That's just the way it was. Of the 14 of the judges, God chose Deborah. So, we are today, Deborah, sitting right here in the pew. I want to tell you something. You are a chosen generation. Now, I'm going to give you four, four points, and then we're going to do something else, okay? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, I want to read one scripture in Judges uh, 5 and 3. Then I'm going to give you my four points. Then uh, let's start with the first uh, verse. 5, 1, and 2. Two and three, okay. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinadnoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord, and I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. There's four things that I want to tell you what Deborah committed to. I'm going to tell you what they are. First, she said, I will be holy in an ungodly world. Second thing, she did. She said, I will be a peacemaker. She was a judge. Okay, because uh, in those days, listen, how would you like to be a judge? Listen, oh, I forgot my, forgot my tree. That's right. She sat under, whew, that's a heavy tree. <laughs> I'll try it. I'm glad I don't have my heels on. She, she would go out every day. Let me listen, let me see, okay. Let me give the other two before I start this. And I will. She said, I will be holy. I will be a peacemaker. I will, I will arise. And then she said, I will sing. Huh. She said in an ungodly way. 
God in the world. Now, ladies, I, you don't have to tell me. And I, I don't have to tell you. We are in an ungodly world. You say, what is our standard of holiness? Our standard of holiness is found in Peter again where it says it is written, Be holy for I am holy. Oh, okay, this is the Lord. Am I holy enough, Lord? That, that's, that, that's, that's my standard. You know, it gets a little taller. I better work on that a little bit. You know, if you're hearing everybody say, well, I wonder what the standard of holiness is. Right there is the standard of holiness. When she was living in an ungodly world and everybody else was, you know, the Ten Commandments ha had been given to them. You know, and, and the first one is, uh, you know, don't put anybody else before me. I, you know, thou shalt love the Lord, you know, and not have any other gods before me. She said, okay, I'm going to do that. Well, everybody else was being heathens. And, it, you know, here we are. We're living in a heathen world. But here she is. She says, I'm going I'm to I'm do what God told me to do. And, and you can go on down through the list of the Ten Commandments. And she said, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to take the name of the Lord in vain. Really? And how many people don't even know about that, Harley? Talk about kids that don't know. When I was teaching Sunday school class, that's one of the things I got my little kids, about 10, 11, 12 years old, to learn the Ten Commandments. They need to know what God expects of them. Not to take the name of the Lord God in vain. Okay, we're going on down. What about remember the Sabbath day? She said, hey, listen. Well, everybody else, now this is heathen. And they again and again and again. But she said, no, this is the state of holiness. And I'm going to, I'm, I, 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 I've, got, I've got to do better myself. I'm going to be holy as God is holy. You know, and I love this. Everybody get the Bible. You're, you're all like this. Put the Bible. I, I love this. When we pledge allegiance to the Bible, this is what it says. And I, I'm going to put in this one word that says, I will, I will pledge allegiance to the Bible. Y'all want to help me sing that? I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. And that is the four commitments that I want to talk to you about. The first commitment that this dear lady had is this. I will be holy when everybody else is unholy. And then she said, I will be a peacemaker because she was a judge and she sat out under a palm tree. That was her office. And can you imagine all of the problems that came to her? Well, she had uh, a lot of uh, domestic problems, you know. Well, my my kids, my kids is cursing. You know what the Bible says about that? That in the Old Testament, you know, if, if they cursed you, and and so here here she is, and and they had domestic domestic problems. They had social problems, and just like we do today. Social problems of uh, well, his cows got out and ate half of my my crops this year, and uh, so and Deborah, we want to know when you, you you decide this. So she was the judge, and you know what? The Bible said, "Blessed are the peacemakers." How many of you have had to be a peacemaker this week? Maybe coming to this this meeting, you've had that. You know, there's a problem at home. You know, but you have had to be a peacemaker. And, and that's what she said. I will be a peacemaker. I'll take care of these things. And, and I was thinking, uh, this little phrase been on my mind. Do you live in Chaosville? Now, I'm not talking about your house. I'm talking about uh, around you as far as all of the problems of this world and all of that. Are you living in Chaosville? Are you... The queen of drama? Are you making things worse? Hey, listen, how do you spell Tom? Oh, what the 
this calm look like? Oh, are you taking a supplement for calm? Or are you taking a class for calm? Listen, she said, listen, praise the Lord, I, I'm going to put my hat on and I am going to be holy and I am going to be a peacemaker. And then she said, because I'll tell you something, her day was a terrible day. Something had to be done. Listen. Say 
well, I'm, I'm just a housewife. Listen, get, get your purse line, dear. Yeah, you're just a housewife. But I'm telling you, you can take care of that good husband of yours and all the kids. And you can, you can have them. Hey, listen. Don't tell your husband you can't. Don't discourage your husband. Don't tell your kids not to get in church. Don't tell your kids not to live right. Don't tell your kids. Let's, let's tell them what they need to hear. That's exactly what Jephthah did. She told Pharaoh, said, listen, we're going to war. We're going to take back what the devil stole from me.
but this morning, and I'm going to close. We're going to have a, we're going to have a little prayer. But I want you to make a commitment. I want you to do four commitments, okay? Like I said, first one, I want you to commit that I will live holy in an unholy world. In the ungodly, let them talk the way they want to talk. Let them lie. Let them be the drama queen. You know, it's all out there. But I am going to live holy in an unholy generation. I'm going to live holy. And listen, you ladies look really good. You look like holiness uh, women. You look like you're, you're praying women. That's the reason I wanted to name every one of you as a Deborah. You are a Deborah. I will do what's right. And not only that, I will be a peacemaker. I will not live in a chaos field. I know what calm is. Because I'm Steals every storm that rages in our heart. And then I will arise. I will go to war. I will do what is right. And not only that, I will sing. I will sing victory song. Oh, oh. Well, listen, I kind of think, I really kind of think what's happening to our churches across the country is when God gives us a victory. God blesses us. I think we're keeping too quiet about it. I think we need to arise and never say, I will see. I will live holy. I will be a peacemaker. I will arise and I will see. What if the Lord wants to shout me? Sister, get your high heels on and just shout for the Lord. Shout like a woman.
Raise our hands. 